Today on Upfront, giving victims a voice, the new push to give crime victims equal rights, Attorney General Brad Schimmel on the changes he says are needed. Then, Emerge Wisconsin, what made a program training progressive women to run for office so successful in Tuesday's election? Plus, a critical corridor, why business leaders say work on East-West I-94 needs to get back on track. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. The rights of criminal defendants are well known. The right to remain silent or the right to an attorney. But advocates say crime victims have fewer rights, and they want to change that. There's a push in Wisconsin to adopt Marcy's Law, named for a young woman in California who was stalked and murdered by an ex-boyfriend back in 1983. Marcy's Law would strengthen the rights of victims in the areas of restitution, information, and notification. The push for greater victim rights is happening in states across the country, with supporters in Wisconsin hoping to amend the state constitution. Wisconsin Attorney General Brad Schimmel is one of them, and he joins us now on Upfront. Mr. Attorney General, good to have you back on the program. Hi, Mike. Thank you for having me. So let me ask you about why we need Marcy's Law. In other words, why do we need to amend the state constitution? We have a Victim's Bill of Rights that we, we, do. That we passed back in 1980, the first state, I think, to yeah. do that. In, uh, we amended the state constitution in 1993 to, to recognize victims' rights. We've done that already. Why do we need to amend the constitution again? Well, Wisconsin always has been a leader. As you've noted, we passed the nation's first victim bill of rights. It's in the statutes, though. It's not in the Constitution. And that's quite a difference in the courtroom when something's a constitutional right versus a statutory right. Our constitutional amendment is, is one paragraph with four sentences in it for, for victims' rights. So what we're looking to do is move um, the statutory rights into the Constitution, and it better evens the playing field. It's never going to be perfectly even because in a criminal courtroom, the defendant's right to a fair trial, his constitutional rights will always have, a, have an edge over the victim's rights. But this moves them closer to even. Is there any downside to this? And I ask that because in other states where this has been looked at, North Dakota, Montana, there have been critics of this who say that there could actually be unforeseen consequences. Do you, are you concerned about that at all? Well, I've heard some concerns that this might, uh, this might involve more work for the criminal justice system, particularly prosecutors. Um, frankly, it's work we should do. Um, if, if, we're, if we want crime victims to come forward and be part of the system, and we need them, if we're going to hold offenders accountable and make our communities safe, we need crime victims to participate in the system. If we want them to do that, they need to perceive the system as not stacked against them. And this can help us do that. The, um, you know, right now, when a judge weighs the rights of a defendant versus the rights of a victim, the judge will always make the call erring on the side, heavily on the side of the constitutional right, because they don't want to create a, uh, they don't want to create an appellate issue that makes us go back and do this over again. So I've heard some, some concern that this will be more work for prosecutors or it'll cost the criminal justice system yeah, more. Yeah, unfunded mandates. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But I disagree because we have that infrastructure in place. We're doing it through the statutory rights of victims. So when you talk about the things outside the courtroom, like the work, the, the notifications the prosecutor's got to give to victims, the, uh, the communications that law enforcement has to have with victims while the case is investigated and pending in court, those things we're doing already. In the courtroom, we may see times where, for instance, at a bail hearing, if Marcy's Law passes as it's proposed, the victim would have a right to be heard at a bail hearing, and they don't have that right now. If they have that right, then we may see some bail hearings take more time. But why wouldn't we give them that right? The judge sees the defendant's face at every single court appearance. I, as a prosecutor for a long time, I, don't, I think it's a good thing that the court sees the face of the victim more often. Is there any chance, though, that this could slow down the legal process? Many, many victims complain that the process drags on forever, and it actually can re-victimize people because of the length of the process. Is there any chance that putting in this, this new law that you could actually slow down justice? No, I think it's the other way around. Crime victims usually aren't happy with how long things take in the system. It's usually the defense that needs more time, and it's often a legitimate request. 
sometimes the defendant wants more time to prove that they, they can behave well after their arrest and that'll help them at sentencing time. Um, sometimes the defense attorney just needs more time to prepare, more time to interview witnesses and things. But usually delays come from the defense. They're, le they're legitimate things most of the time. Crime victims don't want it to go more slowly. They're not going to do anything that drags this process out. During your budget hearing, uh, there were questions from Democratic lawmakers about um, a backlog in rape test kits. I know you don't like the term backlog, but they're saying that there are 6,000 of these, right. these uh, test kits that have not been tested. And why haven't they been tested? They, they were very critical. Right. What's your response to people who say, why haven't those tests been conducted? Well, as you noted, I do disagree with the term backlog because the Wisconsin Crime Lab is up to date with all current pending investigations. All, all DNA sexual assault kits that are sent to the crime lab are tested promptly. And our crime lab tests, tests about eight to 900 of those current cases per year in Wisconsin. The cases we're talking about are cases that have been accumulated in police evidence rooms and hospital storage rooms for decades. And the reason they're there is because sometimes the, the victim didn't want to participate in the criminal justice system, so the kit got stored. Sometimes the, vic the defendant confessed, so you didn't need to test the DNA to find out who did it. You already knew. Um, sometimes the defendant pled guilty. Sometimes the issue was consent rather than identity, so you didn't have a need to test it. What's happened is about three years ago, we started really recognizing as a nation that there is value to go back and look at all those old kits because we know something about sex offenders. They often, if not most of the time, have more than one victim. And so if we went back and tested that DNA, even though identity was never an issue in a particular case, if we tested that DNA, we might link that defendant to another unsolved case out there. So we've recognized the need to go back and look at these. It's not, but it's not a backlog. These are things that no one ever asked the crime lab to test. Wisconsin Attorney General Brad Schimmels, good to have you back on the program. Thank Thanks you, very Mike. much for your time. You bet. And my interview with the Wisconsin Attorney General continues now on our website, WISN.com, where we're talking about whether progress is being made in the fight against opioid addiction and abuse. You'll find that on the upfront section of WISN.com. More women are running for local office in Wisconsin and seeing success. Big night on Tuesday. Coming up next on Upfront, the program teaching women to run from door knocks to raising money. That's when Upfront continues. Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company.